Hello, my name is Jared Niemi, and this is a mini lecture on Bayes' rule. The presentation here is a simplified introduction to probability theory and Bayes' rule, and the presentation follows closely with the Casella and Berger Statistical Inference Second Edition, Chapter 1. For a more thorough introduction than is presented here, please see that chapter. We begin by providing a set of definitions before we get to Bayes' rule. The first definition is that for a sample space. The set S of all possible outcomes of a particular experiment is called the sample space for the experiment. The second definition is the definition for an event. An event is any collection of possible outcomes of an experiment, that is, any subset of the sample space S. As we will do throughout this mini lecture, we will give some definitions or some theorems and then provide examples. The example we will be using throughout is the example of tossing a six-sided die. The six-sided die has numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 for the six different sides. In this example, the sample space are those six integers, 1 up to 6. Now we can list a number of events the ones we presented here, we are presenting here, is the event A. A is the event that an odd number is rolled. That is, a 1, 3, or a 5 is rolled. A different event is event B. That is, a number less than 4 is rolled. That is, a 1, 2, or 3 is rolled. Finally, the event C. Event C is that an, an integer between an inclusive of 1 and 6 is rolled, that is, the entire sample space. The next definition is that for disjoint. So two events, A1 and A2, are disjoint if both A1 and A2 cannot occur simultaneously. A set of events possibly infinite, a1, a2, a3, and so forth, are pairwise disjoint if ai and aj cannot occur simultaneously for any subscript i and j where i and j are not equal to each other. So for example, in our six-sided die tossing example, two disjoint events are a1 and a2, where a1 is that an odd number is rolled, and A2 is that an even number is rolled. A second disjoint, or now pairwise disjoint, set of events are A1, where, sorry, AI, where I indicates what integer was rolled. So here we have disjoint sets a1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6, where each set represents that number being rolled. So A1 represents a 1 being rolled, and so forth. Alright, the next definition is the definition for a probability function. So if we have a sample space S, then a probability function is any function, p, that satisfies the following three requirements. That the probability of any event a in that sample space is greater than or equal to zero. The second rule is that the probability of the entire sample space is one. And if we have a set of events that are pairwise disjoint, then the probability of at least one of those sets occurring is the sum of their probabilities. So for example, if we take the sets as being a sub i, where an i is rolled, and i takes the values 1 up to 6, so here we have 6 disjoint sets, and we take the probability function that assigns one-sixth probability 
to each of those events, then you should be able to verify that this probability function satisfies the requirements above. Specifically, the probability of every event in the sample space is greater than or equal to zero. Since every event has probability one-sixth, this is true. That the probability of the entire sample space, that is a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six being rolled is one. That you should be able to verify here because each of the six options has one sixth probability. So adding the one sixth up six times gives you a entire probability of one. And you should also be able to verify in this example for any events A1, A2 that are pairwise disjoint, right? not necessarily those that I've defined below, that the probability of at least one of those events occurring is the sum of their probabilities. Our one last definition before we get to the definition for or the theorem of Bayes' rule is the definition for conditional probability. The definition for conditional probability says that if A and B are events in the sample space S and the probability that B is greater than zero, then the conditional probability of A given B is the probability of B probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So for example, in our six-sided die tossing example, let's let the, a, a, the event A be that an odd number is rolled. And the event B be the event that a number less than four is rolled. So we are now interested in what is the probability that an odd number is rolled given that a number less than 4 is rolled. If we use the equation above, we f first find the probability of events A and B both occurring. Right, that is that the number is odd and the number is less than 4. The only way for that to occur is that the number that is rolled must be a 1 or a 3. That satisfied that the number is odd and that the number is less than 4. So the probability in the numerator, that is the probability of A and B, is the probability of rolling a 1 or a 3 out of the integers 1 up to 6. All right, so if we use our probability function from before, where each possibility on the die is given a 1 sixth probability, then the probability of rolling a 1 or a 3 out of the 6 possibilities is 2 sixths or 1 third. Now the probability in the denominator is the probability that the number rolled is less than 4. That is, alright, I misspoke. No, I didn't misspeak. All right, now I know where I am. The number in the denominator is the probability that the number rolled is less than four. That is that a one, two, or three is rolled. Those are half of the possibilities, and each possibility has one sixth probability. So the probability of B is one half. So if we put those two together, we have two sixths probability in the numerator and one half probability in the denominator. And when we calculate that probability, we find that the total probability is two-thirds. So the probability of an odd number being rolled, given that the number was less than four, is two-thirds. In this particular example, there's an easier way to find that probability, and that is just to restrict the sample space by the restriction of the event B. So for example, you say the number rolled is less than 4. Then I know that either a 1, a 2, or a 3 was rolled. And now I say, what's the probability, given that a 1, 2, or 3 was rolled, that the number rolled was odd? 
the two possibilities there are a 1 or a 3. Since each of the outcomes here has equal probability, we have we have two possibilities that the number was odd and only one possibility that it was even. So we have a total of two-thirds probability that the number was odd given that the number rolled was less than four. Okay. So that is the that is it for definitions. Now comes Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule follows directly from the definitions given above. And therefore is a theorem. So now if A and B are events in S, then Bayes' rule states that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. So notice the only piece that has changed here relative to the conditional probability definition is the numerator. And that numerator is derived directly from using the definition for conditional probability. So now let's imagine our same scenario as before, that an odd number is rolled, is event A, and event B is that a no the number less than 4 is rolled. Alright, so we can use Bayes' rule, and we do exactly the same as before. Now we need to figure out the probability that the number rolled was less than 4, given that it was an odd number. So if we know that it's an odd number, we know that it's a 1, 3, or a 5. So the probability that it's less than 4, given that it was odd, is 2 thirds. That's the probability of B given A. We have to multiply that by the probability of A, that the number is rolled is odd. That has probability of 1 half. So in the numerator, we have 2 thirds times 1 half. And the denominator is just as before. It is 1 half. So 2 thirds times 1 half over 1 half results in a probability of 2 thirds, just as we had on the previous slide. Now we can take Bayes' rule and expand the denominator, if necessary, by using the definitions for conditional probability and for disjoint sets. So here, the probability of B is expanded to be the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given A's complement times the probability of A's complement. A's complement here is just the opposite of A within the sample space S. So in this case, A's complement is that an even number is rolled. Now in performing the calculations for the probability of A given B, we have already, on the previous slide, calculated the numerator. And notice that the value in the numerator also shows up as one of the terms in the denominator. So the only thing left to evaluate is the other term in the denominator. So here's what's the probability that a number less than 4 is rolled if you know that the number was even. So if we know that the number was even, it was a 2, 4, or a 6. There's only one possibility to being less than 4. So the probability of B given A here is one third. And the probability of A's complement, that is that an even number was rolled, is one half. All right, so we plug those numbers in. And we simplify. And we find that the probability of A given B is still 2 thirds. The last slide in this mini lecture is a very common and useful application of Bayes' rule. And that is in diagnostic screening tests. So the idea here is that you've gone to the doctor and the doctor has performed some test to determine whether you, you or somebody else has a particular syndrome. In this case, I'm going to be talking about the specific example of Down syndrome screening. This is a common test that is performed on, on the fetuses of pregnant women to determine whether the fetus and the, therefore the child will have Down syndrome. So the idea here is that a pregnant woman has gone to the doctor and they've done the routine test for Down syndrome and that test has come back positive. But what we're interested in is 
What is the probability that the child will have Down syndrome given that the test was positive? It turns out that there are three important quantities for determining this probability. But before we get there, let me introduce the notation I'll be using. First notation here is that D indicates that the child has Down syndrome, and D's complement is that the child does not have Down syndrome. So this is the truth in the world that we're trying to understand by using the screening test. Now we're going to use a plus and a minus to indicate whether the screening test was positive, that is a plus, or negative, a minus. So now the three important quantities that we need in order to determine what the probability is that the child will have Down syndrome, given that the test, the screening test, was positive, are the sensitivity of the test. The sensitivity of the test here is the probability that the test will be positive if the child does in fact have Down syndrome. So this particular test had a sensitivity of 94%. So that is 94% of of fetuses who have Down syndrome will test positive in this particular screening test. The second quantity we need to know is the specificity. That is, what's the probability the test will be negative if the child does not have Down syndrome? In this case, it's 77%. And finally, we need to understand the overall prevalence of the disease in the population of individuals who are getting this test. This prevalence in this case, the prevalence is 1 out of 1,000. So of the people who come in to get this test, 1 out of 1,000 fetuses will have Down syndrome. All right, so now we apply Bayes' rule. So here, we're interested in what the probability is the child will have Down syndrome if the test is positive. We use Bayes' rule to say that that's equal to the probability that the test is positive given that they have Down syndrome. That's the sensitivity given above times the probability of the disease itself, that's the prevalence, divided by the overall positive rate. And we're going to expand this just like we did on the previous slide. So in the denominator now we have what's the, it's the sensitivity times the prevalence plus 1 minus the specificity times 1 minus the prevalence. So if we plug the numbers in, here they are, and we can do the calculation and find that if the test is positive, about 1 in 250 children will have Down syndrome. Now we can find the opposite test, and we can say, what if the test came back negative? What's the probability of Down syndrome then? Well, we do the calculation, it's about 1 out of 10,000. So the idea here is just because the screening test came back positive, does not mean that your child has Down syndrome, right? The probability has increased from 1 out of 1,000 to 1 out of 250. So it's increased fourfold, but that's it. All right, this has been a mini lecture introduction to Bayes' rule with a practical example for diagnostic screening tests. Thank you.